people, it's almost like, why try? It's almost like some people would rather believe the lie to, than to accept the reality. And a lot of people are delusional about what's going on. So it seems impossible to talk against the Bible and go against it. It's better safe than sorry. You know, I feel like it's helping me in my life and that's how people feel. So they follow it. It's the same thing with this government system. Now we can look and see clearly. We read Matthew and Matthew tells you pray and you shall receive, you know, ask and it shall be given to you. And we know that's just not true. Same thing with the government system. You had these presidents and senators or what have you say, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It never happens. It doesn't come true. They don't fulfill the promises that they promise us, just like the Bible doesn't fulfill its promise. And we have been conditioned by, you know, the Bible and understanding that things that we are being told and everything that we think we're going to get with the Bible, we're not going to get. And we have been set up for disappointment. And it's the same thing with the government system. We are being set up for disappointment. And you would think now, after all this time and all these presidents that passed, that we would have a system in place that would benefit the people and we would have eradicated poverty or what have you. Right now, you're talking about Donald Trump wanting to spend billions of dollars to build a fucking wall. A wall. The money that they're going to spend to build this wall will completely wipe out poverty in America. Period. So the money that they're, they're going to dedicate it's enough money to get all these homeless people back on their feet and get this economy really gone strong and really doing well. Schools can get rebuilt, you know, after school program that he wants to cut and, the, you know, the, after the school lunches and all that they're trying to cut, all that stuff can be fixed with the money they're going to put in this damn wall. And you mean to tell me that you believe the entire American people is more for the building of a wall? than for schools being built, after school program programs, school lunches. We know that we are more for those programs than for a damn wall. But they're not going to give us what's in the best interest of the people. The wall is going to be built. And we got to think about that. You know, is our government doing what's best for us? And we know that's not true. So we got to pay attention and understand that everything is a deception. And when you start comparing it to what's going on around the world and understand that, one, they don't really get into on our in our news media what's really going on in Africa and Latin America as far as these um, these countries that have been colonized and the whole presidency or what have you. We've seen in South Africa what's going on with the Constitution trying to be changed so the people can take back the land that is rightfully theirs. So it's a lot of stuff that's happening that has been happening that. We're not understanding that when you go back and look at history, it's telling you a story and it's telling you who the real enemy is and what the agenda is. So a lot of us are still brainwashed by the whole presidency. A lot of people still actually believe that we actually elect presidents in this country and that the whole electoral system and everything that happens is all real and it's all true. I think that the Obama administration and what happened with Obama the last eight years there's more than enough proof to show people that the presidency is a puppet post. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, Obama just seems like, you know, a real genuine dude who gets it. And he says he understands the history of African-Americans. Now, you would think with the history of racism in this country, with the history of the injustices and the things that have been happening to black people in America, the fact that we understand about you know Jim Crow and the whole civil rights movement, the fact that we understand about all the police shootings and killing of all these unarmed, unarmed innocent black people, excuse me, and um, the fact that we understand that it has been laws and things put in place to hinder black people. You had Elizabeth Warren. I showed you that video in a couple of um, my previous videos with Elizabeth Warren going on record and speaking and laying down the history and the laws that have been put in place to hinder black people in our progress. It has already been proven that the CIA brought crack cocaine into the black community. We understand the uh, situation that is going on and how the crack epidemic basically has led to the, the impoverished state of African-Americans. It contributed, you know, if not 100 percent, then at least 80 percent to what's going on. So many things that have been wrongfully done to black people purposely by the system. You would think 
this president who said he understand all this black man. Now we know his mom's supposed to be white or what have you, but if nobody knew what color his mom was, everybody would say, you know, he's a black man. He's the first black president. That's what they call him. But you would think that Obama would have done something to reverse these things, to, to bring us up a little bit, to help us out a little bit. He did absolutely nothing. When I asked Obama supporters, you know, name one thing Obama did for black people, specifically only black people. And they go silent. It's nothing that they can point to. And we can point to the things that he did for other people. He did for corporations and companies and nothing for the black community. He did nothing to fix what what is wrong, to make things right. He could have made a difference. And I think that a lot of the white people who voted for him, the ones who actually believed that he was going to be, you know, a real true president, understood that, okay, this black man is going to come in. And he's going to fix the wrongs that's happening with black people. So because I'm tired of hearing black people shit, let this black dude be president and make us make it equal or what have you. And I think a lot of white people accepted that, you know, regular white people. <laughs> uh, a lot of racist people was pissed, of course. But we also as well expected Obama to come in and to fix a lot of these things. The people who understood the laws and things that was in place to hinder us. I mean, at least to go back and have somebody look at all the people that's in prison, all the black people that's in prison due to uh, unfair uh, sentences and due to racism or what have you. At least go and look at them, get their cases and get them out of prison so they can, you know, help their families or what have you. At least look at some of these laws and things that's in place to keep um, black people pushed back and to keep us from reaching our full potential. I mean, just do something to even the playing field. And, you know, he did nothing. Instead, he sat back and he watched. So we have more black people killed by cops, uh, killed by white cops during Obama two terms than black people killed by white cops in the 50s, 60s and 70s combined. I talked about this before. And that's that's crazy. So this is what he did. This is what he's going to be on record as, as sitting by and watching, you know, hundreds of black people slaughtered by white cops and doing absolutely nothing to protect us or doing absolutely nothing to put put something in place to uh, to help us out and to kind of bridge the gap and um, help us uh, get to a place that's equal uh, to white America. And as I said before, our ancestors understood that this would never happen. This would not take place because they knew, you know, who they was working for, who was the um, captors. And we have forgotten that. And the fact that we put a lot of trust into this black man to fix things and to make things better, and that did not happen in two terms, should tell you right there that, you know, the presidency is bullshit. Now, of course, a lot of people are going to defend Obama and say, well, you know, they blocked them. The Republicans blocked them. They wouldn't let him do this and that. And that's what I talked about before. Obama had in his power executive orders, which he passed over 100 of them, where he could have, uh, you know, just used executive orders to get laws passed to at least raise the uh, the wages in America to help people out. But, you know, he didn't do anything really to help people. He just talked really well. And I understand that people liked him because Obama seems cool. He plays basketball and you know he was cool with all the rappers and everything like that. And he seemed like a cool guy. Everybody loved, everybody liked. They loved him. He spoke well. And, you know, this is the same characteristics of a con man. It's just that simple. Con men speak well. They tell you what you want to hear. And, you know, they never give you what they promise because it's a con. And this is what con men do. This is why they call it Congress. They're all con men. It's just that simple. So we look at the religious institution, we look at our government institutions, and we see that they are both conning us. They have been conning us for, you know, a long time, <laughs> a long time. Yet these two institutions are the two biggest institutions, and they have remained so, you know, for, you know, hundreds of years. And why is that? Why? You know, what's going on? It's because we are all brainwashed by that Bible and by you know, this government system and, you know, they have a unique situation set up to where we don't really have the power as individuals to to do anything. You know, the few people like me and others who wake up and see what's going on, we don't really have the power to reach millions of people to get people to wake up and to 
understand our point of view. You know, it's just that simple. And, you know, it's it's almost futile to, to do anything or say anything because, you know, we're not going to reach the amount of people to get this point across. But, you know, putting out videos like this and other videos that people uh, put out can at least kind of spread the word and get it into the consciousness of most people so people can understand what's really go going on. But again, as I said, we are consumed by reality and consumed by life and you know, the obstacles that they have put in our way, paying bills and going to work and, you know, making it to school on time and getting good grades or what have you, taking care of your kids, worried about being shot, worried about feeding yourself, worried about having on the right clothes and sneakers, what time your favorite show goes on, what have you. So much stuff that we are consumed by that people believe is more important than uh, what our government is doing with our freedom, with our money, you know, and what our safety. So we got to pay attention to what's what's been taking place and what they're doing around the world and who are these people that's running this stuff because this all is going back to one group and people sit up there to call you crazy when you talk about a new world order when you talk about white supremacy when you talk about what's been taking place you have some white people who actually look at this stuff and say well they're helping people in africa you know, we had a whole Ebola breakout and you have Africans saying that the uh, Red Cross was the one injecting people with Ebola. You have terrorist groups like Boko Haram and all these bombings and all the stuff that's going on over there. You have the uh, colonization of African countries. And, you know, we look at all the pictures and everything and everybody say, well, Africa ain't messed up. Africa is beautiful. You know, of course, we know it's beautiful. And then you look at the cities and all the structures that have been built in Africa and what these Europeans have done. And we look at that. And a lot of people say, wow, you know, the Europeans are doing good in Africa. Not understanding that, you know, these buildings, these corporations and companies are just, you know, more things, more, more tools, more weapons that they are using to get one African people to work and make these people rich in Africa. It's the same thing that's happening here. Make these people more rich in Africa at the same time draining the land and the country of its resources. It's the same thing. So, you know, we see big builders and people think it's cool and we think, oh, well, African people are employed. It's the same slave system that's here in America where you got to work to survive. And when you install a constitution and you install this system that puts people underneath this time schedule, when you take away their real freedom and their real spirituality and you turn them into robots. This is what's happening in Africa. We talk about a land of people who had true spirituality, who was truly connected. And they're taking that away from these people and they're being raised like we are here in America. Under this constitution, under this president, under these rules, under time. You know, they got to be to work on time now. You know, they got to pay attention to their white masters, their white bosses, and they got to work and they got to do these things instead of being spiritual people who was connected. And they're taking that away in Africa. And we're not paying attention to it because we're not paying attention to history. And we're not looking around the world at other people. We're so focused on ourselves, not looking at the fact that in Africa, in Latin America, colonization is still underway. Imperialization is still underway. And they talk about, you know, things like diplomacy and, uh, uh, you know, having a republic and a democratic republic and what have you, democratic system or what have you. It's all bullshit. These are all European terms used to colonize, used to take over uh, lands of people of color. And this, ha this has been happening for hundreds of years. When you see these things coming into these countries, it's like, for what? So, again, we can't sit back and keep saying this stuff is not happening. There's no such thing as white supremacy. White supremacy is still alive and well all around the world, not just here in America. And we got to pay attention to it. Now, also, people have to understand what white supremacy really is. And it's not every single white person oppressing every single person of color. We have to understand white supremacy is an institution that is implemented by a government structure that is using white people to separate countries, to separate, uh, uh, you know, people, to paint this image of white dominance over people of color. It's just that simple. You know, the fact that white is superior race, that white people are in the image of God, you know, everything we have been seeing in this country for, for decades, for hundreds of years. This is white supremacy. White supremacy is having the power 
to control a group of people and decide whether they are going to be economically strong or weak. That's white supremacy. White supremacy is having the power to pull a, mil a military and a person's country to control the people and control the resources. This is white supremacy. And it's all, you know, done by Europeans. And we call it white supremacy because it's done by Europeans. Not because Linda and John and Carol and all these people that work in Walmart and Walgreens or what have you are white. Not because they exist. And this is what we got to start doing. Again, when you go back to religion, we don't point the finger at God and angels. We point the finger at something else when things go wrong. We point the finger at Satan or demons. I got the devil in my life when things go wrong. Prayers don't get answered. Well, I must not be right with God. I got to get my shit together. We point the finger at everything instead of pointing our finger at the book and saying, you know what? Something ain't right with this book. It promised me something in Matthew and I'm not getting it. It promised me things and I'm working hard and I'm praying. And I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do under God. You know, I'm not still receiving any blessings. I'm not, you know, getting my my prayers answered. You know, people who have prayed over a sick mother and lost them, you know, to disease or what have you. And it's like, we're not still, you know, what's up, God? I've been praying for months for my mom to live and she died. But it's no backlash to God. People still keep their faith and they still, you know, keep on praying. Then we look over to the government and there's no backlash. You know, we point the finger at something else. So we as African-Americans, when we see the oppression and white supremacy, we you know we hear that white supremacy. We automatically point to any white person and we say you're a white supremacy, not understanding that it's no way that these white people can be white supremacy. White supremacy is a system that only a government can really control, not regular people, not regular white people. And we got to make that connection and understand because we're not looking at this government structure. We keep looking at every single white person because they scream a racial slur or what have you. They are racist. They're not white supremacy. They're part of the problem. They are what white supremacy is using to control us. They're part of that problem. But they're not all white supremacy. We got to understand that and stop pointing the finger at Joe Blow and look at this overall government system that has taken over, not just here, but in Africa as well. And a lot of people just can't see that because we think about white supremacy, we automatically point to the white man. The average white man is basically being used. And um, we can see it clear as day and I understand people are angry. They don't want to see it. They just automatically want to be upset. And um, we waste our energy with that. We waste our energy screaming at these racist people. So what? It's a bigger problem. It's a bigger enemy. And we got to um, look at history, understand who the enemy is and what they are doing and what they what they have planned. And that's the main thing, what they have planned, the agenda. And, um, yeah, they almost have it fulfilled. And that's the crazy thing. We got to pay attention to it and understand that Iran, North Korea, which we're going to see, of course, coming up, is going to be the next points of interest. They're already talking about possibly a war in uh, North Korea. They're circling Iran, which Iran is a fucking death trap. It's going to be tough. So they had to make sure they circle it to, to get in there. That's not going to be an easy win. And not just that. Now you have a president like Trump. <clears throat> excuse me, like Trump. Who's going to fight for Trump? And I was in the military. I got Marine buddies. I got Army buddies. We was just talking about this yesterday, where you have a lot of people in the military that are not willing to die for Trump, especially black folks, especially people of color. They're not willing to die for Trump. So what kind of war is going to be waged? You know, it's, it's going to be a drone war. We don't we're not going to really see too many troops out there because uh, a lot of people are not willing to go through with this. So we got to understand we're going to see because it's clear now. It, it took so long for us to figure out what's going on. But um, we, we can see where they're headed and what the targets are. We don't got the um, the central bank set up. They're coming. So even when you look at the word uh, constitution, it goes back to Rome. And we understand, as I talked about before, our system, our government system is set up just like ancient Rome with our, you know, Senate and um, what the presidency or what have you, just like ancient Rome. So when we look at these African countries and the fact that they have constitutions and presidents or what have you, we can see who is controlling what. And we understand that we have the Rothschilds. And we have the uh, the banking system and we have Rome that has been in power 
you know, for hundreds of years. And we got to understand that this is a system that has been uh, set in place a long time ago that is still in power and still uh, fulfilling their agenda. And this is what we're seeing with the colonization and the imperialization of these countries. And um, it exists. You know, a lot of people get offended. White people get offended when you talk about uh, white supremacy, when you talk about colonization or what have you. A lot of people get offended as if you're bringing up some old stuff when this stuff is still right in our faces. And, of course, they control the news media, so it's just not going to be. We're not ever going to see it put out there the way it should be. And a lot of people don't understand that the very people that is in control of uh, white supremacy and in control of what's going on own the media source, of course. And they're not going to just come out and say it. And you just you get white people just trying to defend it because they don't want to be associated with it. And they think when you speak about white supremacy, you're talking about them. And we're not talking about them. If you are not trying to oppress black people or trying to harm black people in any way, then we're not talking about you. You have nothing to do with it. You know, chill the fuck out. And that's the, that's the problem. You know, a lot of white people think we are just attacking them and we are, you know, being racist, like we could be racist. And they're not looking at history and they're not looking around the world and seeing what's taking place. Now, when I point this out to uh, a lot of white people, they're shocked. And I've done this. I've been in a lot of conversations where I point this out. Well, okay, you know, they say, stop talking about slavery. It happened so long ago and this and that. And, you know, white people have helped the world so much and we helped so many people. And if you point to Africa, where have they helped Africa? They installed constitutions. They basically took over and made it as if they was helping us out when really they was raping what we had and using it to further their uh, wealth and their their reach, their control. So, you know, Africa is a little bit different because, you know, it's only but so much they can do there. They can't really go hard as they want to because the people will rise up. And again, we've seen that happening in South uh, South Africa with the uh, people in South Africa wanting the constitution changed. They want, they want their land back. And, you know, even when you look at the video in uh, South Africa, when it was throwing the people out of the meeting, these were black people. This was Africans that was on the security team that's throwing out other Africans who are trying to take back the country for them and their people. That's control right there. That's brainwashing. I'm trying to help us get back to a level of power and to reach uh, uh, the rest of the country, the rest of African people and to take back what's rightfully ours. And here you are, an African man and woman helping them take our country. And, you know, the security team, I was shocked that these, these was African men that was doing this to their own people who was trying to basically save the country for them. So a lot of you are still falling for the trap. You are going with the media narrative. And anytime you are going with what the entertainment world is putting out, what mainstream media is pointing out, uh, anytime you are going with that flow, you are following the trap. You are following exactly what they want you to follow. It's always a hidden agenda. It's a reason why they do things, why they put things out. So, you know, we can just go back and just, as I talked about before, pay attention to everything we have been seeing. One, since Obama has taken office back in 2008. And just pay attention and look at, you know, Oscar Grant, the whole Fruitvale Station movie. And, you know, all of the killings of unarmed black people that we have been seeing, all of the movies and TV shows that have been coming out to get you into this frenzy of racial separation and hatred for each other. You know, uh, we could just go and look at the movies um, straight out of Compton. I mean, even 12 Years a Slave, the Nat Turner Insurrection. I get out, of course. You know, the TV show Shots Fired. And anybody who has watched the last season that just came out of Orange is the New Black, you see the direction that they are going in. And they're going to keep pounding this whole racial narrative of, uh, you know, racial separation and divide. It is a reason behind it. Now, the Get Out uh, movie is, um, you know, I wasn't going to go see the movie. It's something I wasn't going to go see. I understood what the narrative was going to be about just from looking at the preview. And I understood that, you know, um, it was definitely going to be something that's going to try to point black people in a certain direction. And that's exactly what the movie was about. I know a lot of people have put out videos talking about this. 
uh, movie or what have you. And, um, you know, the thing is, you know, I didn't go see the movie. I supported the local bootleg man and I bought a bootleg copy. Support the brother. <laughs> uh, and watch the movie. And it's, yeah, it's unbelievable. 